What's up? It's me, Devin, your favorite urban gardener, doing a little urban gardening today in my apartment. And um, the reason is, is because I got a bunch of nice new plants yesterday. And I got one of my favorite plants, one of my favorite house plants, the aloe vera, which we all love because, you know, growing up, uh, when it, I was always uh, doing something extreme, skateboard, trying, pretending to skateboard or rollerblade, whatever, scraping my knees or cooking and cut, burnt, burning myself a little bit on accident. And we'd always go to the aloe vera plants. We'd, you know, cut a little piece of foliage off, take the, um, the gooey stuff on the middle and put it on our cuts and burns and scrapes and, you know, it would heal it. It's an awesome plant for doing that. Um, so why not grow it so you can have that on hand? whenever you want. So the thing about aloe plant, it is, a, it is a succulent cactus, like, you know, all of our other succulents that we love. And as such, it's a pretty low key house plant. There's a few things that people get in trouble with. And uh, one of the reasons, uh, and, and a few things that keep people from succeeding with aloe when really we should all be able to grow this successively, uh, successfully. Um, the first thing is people don't give them enough light. You gotta give them, you gotta give them sunlight. People think that succulents, because they're succulents, they're easy. You can put it in this little corner, away from the windows, no problem, on a shelf, no problem. It is a problem. They need to be in a bright, sunny area. Um, I'm gonna put this, this window behind me, that's a southern facing exposure. I'm gonna put it just outside that window, inside my house, inside my apartment, but near the window so it can get that bright southern light. South or west are the best for our aloe. The other thing is, they need to be watered properly. Now what is proper watering? So I'm doing a little bit of a, something uh, risky with this one because this ornamental container I'm going to use doesn't have any drainage holes. I don't recommend that unless you're a pretty advanced gardener and you know how to kind of anticipate what that would mean. But for the rest of us, make sure that your pot has holes like this. Can you see me? I can see you. Um, and that is going to make sure that the water, when you water it, it drains out and then you really got to make sure that you let it dry out totally between waterings. That is so important for the seconds. If you overwater it, if you don't give it enough sun, it's gonna look a little bit limp, it's gonna look crap, and it's not gonna fill out. But if you give it the right amount of water, you give it the right amount of light, they'll fill out quickly, and they'll provide you all of the nice foliage that you want for all of your cuts and burns and scrapes and some whatever else you're gonna be doing that's crazy. Um, so anyways, I have this Gorgeous little terracotta clay kind of thingy. Looks southwestern-ish, and I thought it'd be perfect. Um, so let's do a little plant demo of planting these all together. In case you've never done that before, you know, if you go and you just want to plant like one little, uh, one, one of these little guys, it's going to look kind of dinky and not that sweet. So I like to plant multiple together. So first thing, I have my little pot. I filled it with some soil in the, into the base. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to pull each of these out. Look, these are just tiny little things, but that doesn't matter. They don't really need much soil to be able to thrive. So first thing, I'm going to pull them all out just so I can get a good idea of what they look like. Now I have them. I can see, you know, oh, this has a little piece of crappy foliage. I'm going to cut this off now. This is a great time to do any little grooming. This one's kind of crummy over here too. I'll cut that one right off. Um, this one, I don't like it either. I'll cut that off. Be vigilant. If you don't like a piece of foliage, cut it off. This is the time, this is the best time to do it. Now that you have them all situated like this, you can kind of get a good idea. If I were to plant it like this, and then this one like, like this, it would look weird. So I get them, I take them, I situate them how I want. Uh, make sure, break up the roots a little bit. This is, these are pretty intense roots. So I definitely want to root, uh, break these roots up a little bit. Then stick it into the pot one by one. And with these, this is kind of like planting a few iris in a container or in the ground. You put them in the direction that you want them to grow. Um, and that way they'll fill out in the way that you want them to fill out. I'm trying to get kind of a rounded look. So I'm going to, I'm going to grow them in a way that makes them look rounded. Um, but this one has a nice little central thing. So I'm going to make this right, put this right in the middle and that's going to give it some central height. So now I have it situated, each of them situated right in the direction that I want, take some more soil, fill it out. So, you know, when you're urban gardening, when you're planting inside your home, if you use these little painter tarps, I think I buy them at the store, I get three for five bucks. 
It's super cheap and it saves me a lot of anxiety. I don't worry about getting my apartment dirty. I don't worry about any of that because when I'm done, I'm just gonna roll that tarp up and throw it away and it's good. And it only cost me, you know, less than two bucks. So just give, give, the, give the plant some soil like you need to. And from here, I'm gonna give it some water. I'm gonna put it by my sunny window and then I'm gonna let it dry out before I water it again. So that makes it nice and happy. Um, and that's really about all you need to do to get a successful aloe vera. Look, that looks pretty sweet, don't you think? You know, if I planted one in there, it'd look pretty lame. So planting three makes it look cool, fills out quickly, and gives you what you want. That's what we love about gardening. You know, the French, uh, the, back in the day, the Renaissance French gardens, they believe that if you were not manipulating nature, AKA, you know, that's what I just did. I just manipulated nature by planting them together. Um, then you weren't gardening. So take, do, do what you want to do with the plants. That, that's what we love about gardening. Do what you want and uh, give them the love that you want to give them and they'll give you back as much love as they can. So anyway, I'm Devin, your favorite urban gardener.